Hey Divi creators, thanks for stopping by our documentation for the Divi Full Width Header Module. The Full Width Header Module is a versatile module and can be used throughout your design in multiple different ways. For example, you can use this module in a page template for posts, projects, and pages to display a dynamic post title. Or you can use it as a promotional design element to highlight an important page on your website, a downloadable freebie, promote a podcast, and more. This module has the ability to display a title, subtitle, body text, two images, an icon, and two inline buttons. In order to use the full width header module, you'll need to add a full width section first. In this documentation video, we'll walk through how to use the full width header module and explore all of the content and design options within the full width header module. Let's dive in. Let's start by navigating to our page and enabling the visual builder. This will reload the page with Divi's drag and drop interface. Hover over the full width header module settings and click the gear icon to bring up the module settings. Module settings are always grouped into three broad categories, content, design, and advanced. Within each tab, settings are further sorted into groups, which can be collapsed or expanded with ease. Many of these settings are available in all or most of Divi's modules and have their own separate detailed documentation. So in this video, we'll stick to settings or settings groups that are unique to the full width header module. The first settings group under content is text, where you can add and edit the text content of the module. You can add a title, subtitle, edit the text for button one and button two, and add body text. For each of these options, if their fields are left blank, those items will not display, making the content of this module completely optional and customizable. The next settings group is images. This is where you can add a logo image and header image to the module. If you don't want any images to appear, leave these blank. To add an image, click Add Image to bring up your WordPress media library. Here you can choose an already uploaded photo or upload a new one. Once you have selected the image you want, click the Upload Image button in the bottom right corner. The next settings group, Link, is where you can add links to the module. If you are using buttons in the module, you can add the links to those buttons here in the Button 1 and Button 2 fields. The remaining two settings groups, Background and Admin Label, are common to all or most of Divi's modules, so we won't go over them here. For more information, please refer to our written documentation. Now let's dive into the Design tab settings. The first settings group of note is Layout. This is where you can set the text and logo alignment for the entire module. You can also make the header full screen by toggling that option to Yes. The next settings group is Scroll Down icon. If you'd like a scroll down icon to appear, toggle this option to Yes, which will trigger the following options to appear. You'll be able to choose which icon you want displayed, the color of the icon, and the size of the icon. The next settings group is Image. This is where you can style the images of the module with settings like Image Alignment, rounding the image corners, adding a border, styling that border, adding an image box shadow, and adjusting the image properties like hue, saturation, brightness, and more, including 16 blend modes. The next settings group is overlay. This is where you can add a background overlay color. Note, you can also set the background color for this module under Content, Background. The next settings group is Text. This is where you can set the overall text styles for the module, like selecting the text color, light or dark, and adding a text shadow. You can set further specific styles for the title text, body text, and subtitle text in the next settings groups. The next three settings groups, Title Text, Body Text, and Subtitle Text, all have the same text options. 
The only unique text styles are under title text, where you can set the title heading level, and body text, where you have additional styling options for links, lists, and block quotes. The rest of the text settings are the same. Let's briefly go through them. First up, we have font, font weight, font style, text alignment, text color, text size, and text shadow. These are all fairly standard settings that most users intuitively understand. If not, we cover every setting in detail in the written documentation. What you may be less familiar with are the next two settings, letter spacing and line height. Letter spacing allows you to set the space between letters in the text. The higher the number, the more space between letters. Line height, on the other hand, allows you to set the space allotted to each line of text. The higher the number, the more space between lines. The next two settings groups, button 1 and button 2, is where you can style the two buttons in the module. To apply custom styles to the buttons, toggle the Use Custom Styles options to Yes, triggering the following options to appear. You can adjust the button text size, text color, background color, border width, border color, border radius, letter spacing, font, font weight, font style, button icon, icon color, icon placement, and text shadow as well as adding margins, padding, and a button box shadow. The button box shadow is different than the button text shadow in that it applies the shadow to the entire button box rather than just the text. The remaining settings groups are common amongst all or most Divi modules. Sizing, spacing, border, box shadow, filters, transform, and animation. So we won't linger on each of those settings here. Finally, let's take a look at the Advanced Tab Settings Groups. First is the CSS ID and Classes Settings Group, which allows you to apply unique CSS IDs and classes to the module and style them via your child theme style sheet or the code section in Divi's theme options. The Custom CSS Group also allows you to apply custom CSS to certain elements within the module, like the main element, header container, header image, logo, title, and more. The next settings group, Attributes, allows you to specify the value of your link's relationship attribute between the original source and the link source. This is helpful to specify because search engines can use this attribute to get more information about a link. The more information search engines have from your website, the more accurate placement you'll have in search results. You can also define the image alt text and title text, as well as the logo's alt text and title text. These are useful for search engine optimization. The rest of the settings groups here, conditions, visibility, transitions, position, and scroll effects, all give you powerful and granular control over how and when this module is displayed. However, since these groups are common in all or most of Divi's modules, they have their own separate documentation. You can visit the written documentation for more details. And since that brings us to the end of our full width header module settings, I'll click the green check button to save our edits. Then exit the Visual Builder to view our new full width header page. And that's it for our Divi full width header module demonstration. Before you go, make sure to check out all of the design tips and tricks we have for the full width header module over on the Elegant Themes blog, which is linked in the description. And don't forget to check out the rest of our documentation at eleganttheMes.com/documentation so you can be on your way to mastering Divi.